On today's episode of the Biz Talk, we've got something a little bit different. This is an inside peek to our business section of OWC. We cover marketing strategies, social media, hardcore business tactics, and also a little bit of Q&A. Hope you enjoy it. Get started right now. You've got to be on digital. You know, you, you need to learn how to communicate through digital today. Okay, you have to start. So, um, part of what I talk about here is you guys are here to get your skills down. You know, and that's important. You need a product. That's your product. Is your work but you also have to understand how to communicate your work and the way that people communicate today is very different than it was 10 years ago. People communicate through these devices. That's how you research, that's how you find people, that's how you find salons. That's how, you know, this is why hashtags are important in your posts as well. It's just, it's why your posts just your basic posts are important. You know, you have to put it out there. You should still incorporate the basic marketing techniques of nails, which is what our team talks about all the time. The one that I still think is probably one of the most important is wearing your own work. Because wherever you go, you're your own billboard, right? That's still, I don't think that ever is something that you know, you should stop doing. Your nails should always look, you know, tight. And that, you know, who did your nails? Me. And you're ready to, you're ready to transact at that point. You're ready to pitch somebody. You know, that, that's like, it's the easiest way to, to, to an icebreaker into your business is to wear your work. You have to absolutely do that. Part of what I do um, if you look in every single video or any time I'm out, if I'm either, most of the time I'm wearing a hat and it's Young Nails hat. I'm always, that's my version of I wear our branding everywhere, everywhere I go, you know, and people always ask, what is that logo? And it, you know, they may not be even close to my business, but I just, I still believe in that. I believe in wearing your works. For you guys, it's just, so key, you know? Especially if you put a little bling in there, somebody's gonna ask you, probably every day, somewhere you go, you're gonna get one question from someone, and it's a great way to start a conversation or to hand them a card with your Instagram account on it, you know? Come check me out, check out my work, you know? Um, literally, I would have one business card and I would just have my at H solo 27 and Instagram. That's all I would put. I not even put my name on it. I would just have my Instagram handle. Go check out my work. All my information is there. Hit me up if you have any questions. I, I'm in love with nails. That's what I would say, you know? And um, which is the importance of, of building your portfolio. That's why you've got to have your portfolio, right? So. That one basic, still the way, when you're out into the wild, not in your salon, right? You're at the store, wherever. Um, always wearing your work, always be ready to obviously talk to people. And still, you know, the old school ways of selling are still valid. You should still always be doing that. They're just not as uh, fast. As, as digital, and, and and it's trying to compete with digital. It didn't have that. It didn't. It wasn't able to compete. It didn't have that to compete with ten years ago. Now it's like you can't even. Digital is so much faster. The reason why I'm so big on this is because it has impacted our company in such a massive way. I I, I don't. It's very, I've talked about this before, it's frustrating when I go somewhere and somebody's talking about, you should be on 
it's all over. Like I know so many people on LinkedIn, on Instagram, talking about their social media experts and, and why you should be on social media. And then I go and click on their profile page and they have like 120 followers, but they're experts at social media, you know? It's like, where's your followers? followers? You should be practicing what you preach. So, and you should actually have information for people, letting them know uh, promoting and marketing on social media directly impacted our company's revenue. Our company grew from that, you know? That's what happened to us. So when I talk to you guys about this, it's not like theory. It's actually things that we've put into play, put into practice, we've executed, and then seen the results of this, okay? And it's not stopping. I was just having a conversation with Greg right now. We were going over like just numbers and it's getting crazy again. You know, it's not, our company continues to grow, which is very exciting because it, it further uh, supports, you know, this, everything that I'm talking to you guys about that shit works. You know, it really, really works. Um, creating content. This was the first place that we started in our journey. It was, what do we do? You know, where do we begin? I knew what we were doing before wasn't working simply because our sales were declining. <laughs> you know, it's like, hello. And at that time, we were, we were investing a lot of money in traditional advertising. We were investing a lot of money in um, the trade magazines, you guys all know and trade shows, lots and lots of trade shows. There was a point where our sales were like this and let's throw more money at it, you know? Let's increase our, our trade magazine. So at one point we had six full pages in each of the trade magazines. You know, very, very expensive. It is not cheap to advertise those magazines and saw nothing happening with our sales. So it was a decision of, we have to go full digital. So if, if any of you are not full force digital right now, I understand. We were in the same position with Young Nails. Made the decision, which was not easy to do, to go full digital. And it was, uh, it was crazy for a while because now it's like, now you're nowhere, right? At least before we were at the trade shows and we were, we were in the magazines, now we don't exist for all intents and purposes, except on what we were doing in, in the digital space, which was the same thing we were doing for like the last five years, which was a post every three or four days on Instagram. And I had zero to do with any of it. It was just like, yeah, just post something, you know? And then uh, on YouTube, we were doing like two or three videos a month at that time, and the same instructional videos over and over and over again. So um, I had to figure out content, you know, and in the beginning, in the beginning phase, the reason why I'm telling you this is because in the beginning, I did not know what I was doing, okay? If you're feeling confused, I understand because I did not know what I was doing. That's a fact. It's not, it's not an exaggeration. I was scared. <laughs> I was anxious. I had to put myself out there you know, when my brother had, he was the face for so long, for so many years, you know, and I, I came to him and was like, well, I'm gonna do something new. He was like, cool, you know, and, and I wanted to do a vlog. And he's like, what, what's a vlog? You know, and I, I can't, okay, Greg, here's a camera, start talking in the camera about our business and you're gonna vlog. It, like, what the hell is that, you know? So I, I just took it upon myself. I'm like, we have to do something. I felt like our company was at a point where we were, if I didn't do this, we were gonna be done, you know? And that's the extreme my brain goes. It's never, I don't have any middle ground. You know, it's like, we're gonna die <laughs> is where my, my brain goes. So, I just said, screw it, you know, and started, started doing a vlog, had nothing to do with nails. So I had to walk that, that balance of like, okay, it's, not, it's kind of working, we're losing subscribers, our sales aren't changing, let me put nails in it, 
you know, and see what happens. So had to figure it out. And it took six or seven months. You know, I was doing two videos a week on YouTube. We went from two to three videos a month to two, two videos a week every Monday and Wednesday. And I had to figure it out. You know, and they didn't do well in the beginning, and it was hard. It was very, very hard. A lot of anxiety. I mean, I still had like, even to this day, you know, I'm, I'm, I have other hobbies outside of of here that I'm, I'm a beginner at right now. Like a beginner. I'm the guy that's walking in the room that doesn't know anything, and it sucks, and I hate it, and have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> but I do it. I just like walk in the room. You know what I mean? And, and I sit down and I'm like, this is gonna take years to develop, right? But I do it because I'm used to that. And that's what I had to do then and I'm still doing it today and it's what you guys have to do also if you're uncomfortable with digital communicating you're going to you're going to feel uncomfortable and it's going to suck but you will get better it just takes time and it takes a lot of a lot of practice it really does it took you know it took 9 months for us before we got to a point where we saw a little spike in our sales and we we're like oh shit is this no it's not working and then october it was like oh my god something is really ha and then that's 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 when we started to see things working so to imagine that 9 months two videos a week. In June, we went to three videos a week. We bumped up our Instagram posts at that time to once a day and still nothing worked. You know, it takes time. You know, it took that long. So patience, patience, patience. I didn't just get it. And you shouldn't feel like you have to get it. It's going to take time. You know, there's, there's a, there's very few people on social that do it and they go to like a million followers. That is so rare. That does not happen. The reality is it takes a lot of time and a lot of work. There's no way around it, okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to uh, just share. The second thing now I wanna talk about is creating content, okay? What is content? What makes up good content? And after three years of doing this, we have figured out, and giving this to you, this is the truth. What makes good content, it has nothing to do with likes, views, subscribers. That is not the metric for what makes good content. What makes good content is simply this. Are you giving the person watching some kind of value, okay? Boring as shit, right? You're like, Ugh. <laughs> You're like, that's it, I knew that. That's the truth. That is the absolute truth. Let me give you an example. It's the difference of creating a piece of content, which everybody here sees on Instagram and on YouTube constantly, of the person solely talking about you know, like um, how amazing their work is, whatever it is, painting, you know, business, you know, I'm da 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 like really talking themselves up. Or somebody on Instagram or YouTube trying to sell you something. That's an instant turnoff, right? You're just like, flip, you know, just thumbing through, right? Whereas you come across something and somebody says, I'm gonna show you exactly how to save 10 minutes on your service, your nail service. You might actually stop. Why? Because that is something of value to you, okay? The other thing is if you're thumbing through and you see something that makes you laugh or makes you cry, some kind of emotion, that also will make you stop. So con good content is broken down really into two categories. This is just to simplify it. This is how I look at it, okay? It, it's very easy to understand. It'll help you go, oh my God. And it'll make, it'll clear the cloud, you know, the, the, the fog of like, how do I create content? It'll make it much easier. So, um, two things. 
something educational, right? Or something entertaining, okay? So educational in that you're gonna learn something for your business or entertaining, something that's gonna make you laugh or cry. And then there's the best kind of content, which is that does both. Something that's going to give you some type of education plus make you laugh or cry or have some kind of emotion, okay? So when you're behind your chair and you're thinking, what do I need to do to make good content? Don't, don't think of like, oh, I need to um, make this picture look good. I need to talk about what my service prices are. I need to, you know what I mean? Think instead, what could I teach my client? What could I teach my client? You guys, the amount of information that you guys have and know that your client doesn't is endless. It's endless. That in itself is good content. For example, if you did, I, I always use this example because it actually happened and this post blew up on Instagram. And our, we had a mentor in the UK. Um, her name is Monica. She's a phenomenal nail technician and a, even more than that, she's just a very good person. She did a post on, um, I think it was picking up an acrylic pearl. How to, and the video footage was crappy. You couldn't really see, it was like sort of pixelated. It wasn't even that good. And she was like, the reason why she did it was because a student of, her, of hers asked, can you do something on how to pick up an acrylic pearl? So she did. She just did a basic one, pick up the pearl, angle, I don't know it, you know, pressure, pick it up, lay it down. <laughs> and the thing went crazy. You know, I think she got hundreds of thousands of views on it. That's not the metric though, right? Like the, I mean, that tells us, okay, it was very popular, a lot of people liked it. Great, right? But the reason why is because what that told me was, oh my God, the basics, the fundamentals of nails, there's even struggle there. But if you can imagine for one second that you're, you're creating content on your channel, okay, your Instagram profile page, and your content is made up of this. First of all, the most basic is nail shots, right? That's, that takes no effort. You do a set, you take a picture. If you don't have that, then you can go into, like if, if you're building a clientele, you can do your own nails, or you could work on these hands that you guys have been working on this week and take a picture. And for those of you that are like, I don't wanna post this weird hand, we post on YouTube. If you go look at our demos, a lot of our demonstrations with Greg and Tracy or Stephanie or whoever is doing a demo, they're working on this hand. You know why? Because I don't care. <laughs> I want to, it's not about, you know, how pretty the angle is. All those things are important later, but in the beginning phases, it's about the information, getting good, valuable information out to the other side. So if you're sitting in your chair, you've already got one piece of content, which is basic nail shots. The second should be, what, how can I educate my client, you know? Just tips. Hey guys, when I put on a nail form, this may seem easy, but actually putting on a nail form does take skill. Here's what I do. I blah, 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 and then I put it on and at this angle and whatever. I don't know the, this, the talk, but that's what I would do. And you can literally just get one of these mounts that are like 80 bucks on Amazon and you can do that every day. And I'm telling you, the quality of the video doesn't matter right now. None of that matters. You know what, can you imagine your client, anybody, not just your client, but even somebody that you meet, if you send them to your page and you're educating nails on there, they're gonna be like, whoa, 
She knows what the hell she's talking about. She knows nails. I want to go to her. I want to go to her. If you don't like to show your face, don't show your face. If you don't like to talk, you don't have to talk. You can put captions. You can literally put captions. Three key steps to, to form placement. Doing captions is not hard. In the beginning, it might take a little time. With Now there's so many apps actually where you can just overlay over video. It's super, super easy. Now, not only does that educate your clients, it gives your profile page value, right? Like you are an expert in your field. You know more than them, right? You're a pro. What it does is it starts to differentiate you from the, your, your competition in your area. Why? Do you think your competition is doing that? Taking the time to really educate their clients on these things? I can tell you, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, okay? If you started doing this, now you're creating content, you're establishing, your, you're establishing yourself as an expert, you don't have to show, if you don't, I mean, I understand that because I didn't like being on camera. I swear to God it's true. I did not like being on camera. <laughs> now I'm all over the damn camera. I'm like, give me two cameras, one here. <laughs> Victoria, I want a third and a fifth. Every angle I turned. <laughs> um, but the truth is I didn't like it at first. I really hated it, you know? Um, but you can, you can just have it. There's actually a lot of nail videos where you see, you don't see the person's face, you just hear them talking. You know, you can do that. And talk about basic things. And please, one of the biggest issues I see is it's, it's the nail pro's concern of what other nail pros are going to think about the content they're putting out. You know? Like you're worried about, well, I'm, I'm in a salon with four other girls. If I start putting this content, I know they're gonna watch it. I know they're gonna see it. They're gonna start talking. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I went through that too. Everybody this company was looking at me. My own company was looking at me like, what the hell is our CEO doing? You know? But for me, I felt like my, my business depended on it and it, it really did. So um, this, is like, if I ask you now, hey, give me 10 content ideas, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to write them down very quickly. Healthy products, healthy natural nail, preparation, you know, proper prep, form application, angle of the brush, using Tube gels, you know, I don't, you don't have, I'm not, you don't have to even say our name. You know, if you want to use our name, great, awesome. You don't have to. You can talk about the technique. I don't care about that. The technique, you know, what I learned at OWC, you know what I mean? You, there, you can just go on finishing, filing, top coat application. Everything that you guys have learned this week, you have like 30 videos to go. The only thing that what's stopping you from doing that is I don't want the video to look bad. I want it to be perfect. My camera, it's kind of blurry. It doesn't look right. None of that matters, you know? When you look at our videos now, like they're, there's, you know, we have, they're, they're, they're pretty clean and like Victoria's got them all dialed in, the color and everything, it looks nice. Go back just two years and look what I was doing. Look at it. You know what I mean? It's insane. Our, our biz talks that we used to do in the beginning, I literally, I just put a damn table down, the, the table and I didn't, we didn't even have proper mics. I just put the camera and the background is our, our production room where we experiment and I was like, I don't care. I just want to shoot and I want to get content out. It's about the information. You should see how we, we come up with topics for BizTalk. What are people asking for? You know, Stephanie, what are people asking for? What do they want to know? You know, oh, this came up. I had three questions on this, two questions on that. That's what drives our content. It's not what I want to talk about, even though I do talk a lot, like every day. 
Um, but it's, it's, it's really driven off of what do people want to understand or learn, you know? And I can bring expertise on the business side because I know what it takes. I know how damn hard it is to build a business. I know what you, what you guys are gonna go through building a business, especially in the, a nail professional, they're entrepreneurs. If, you, if, you're, if you're not in a commission situation, you're an entrepreneur. You know, you're a business person. And you have to, be, you have to worry about expenses, you gotta worry about uh, inventory, marketing, all the things that I have to worry about, you guys have to worry about too. You guys are entrepreneurs. And so like I can talk to that. And no sugarcoating it is tough, you know? But the payoff is huge. It's to, to, to build your own successful business, oh my God. Like that in itself is just, it's amazing. It's an amazing journey. And then obviously Tracy and Greg and anybody else on their team that comes on, they provide their experiences, you know, with it. And so, um, but I'm always looking to give value. All of our content is driven by what does, what will give value to our community, you know? And it's not the other way around, never once. So now you guys understand um, how to create content because I'm telling you that's how we do it, you know? And you, it's there. So start doing it, okay? <laughs> start, start doing it, even if you start with one video a week. One video a week, you know? Some of my clients, they say, I hate my hands. I don't want a picture. I go, I will smooth out your skin. Don't worry. Then they're like, happy their picture's on the page. I don't want you to get wrapped up. In the, I'm telling you in the beginning, you, you just have to take the shot post it. If you know, like if you're sitting there editing a picture and then you end up not posting it, stop editing the picture. Just, just, just keep going. Okay. And one of the things that I always say too, is we get so caught up in like, oh my God, people are judging my work. Oh my God, people, they're not, they're not. Because if it's, even if your picture is average, nobody's stopping and then judging the average picture. They're just going past it. That's why you need volume because social media right now is so fast paced that you go, like you're literally, I mean, you guys know, when you're on, when you're on, you're just like, next, next. Dude, I'm like, it's, it's insane how fast I go. And then it's only when something really catches my eye, it's like, boom, you stop. You know, but you're not sitting there going average, uh, a little above average, <laughs> slightly below average, medium average, you know, or even if it's not good, you're not like really awful and you're staring at the picture. No, no, nobody's doing that. You know, nobody's actually, it, I'm telling you, nobody's really judging except for yourself. And that's why, that's why we put out so much vault. We didn't start doing volume, but it's how we got to put out 70 pieces of content a day. It's because I know how fast people go through, so I wanna put out more. First of all, I know how fast people thumb through content. Number two, I also know that I don't know shit. And what I mean by that is this. I might think I know what picture's gonna do well. I don't have the slightest damn clue. And that is through posting a lot on social media. What you think is gonna do well, it's not gonna do well. What you think is like, eh, I don't know. The desk is messy. I've had this conversation with Tracy. Like, the desk is messy. She posts it anyway, and it just, you know, 12, 15,000 likes. I'm like, what the hell? So, yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's that, like, I know that. You know, me telling you that, you might still say like, oh, I don't know, I'm telling you, that is how it works. That's why I always preach volume, you know? But you gotta walk before you run. You can't start putting out 10 posts a day, you will completely lose your marbles, you know? You start with one, you go to three, go to five, 10. That's how we did it. We started with two, we started with two a week, you know? YouTube and then once a day on Instagram. So we had like one and 
1.25 posts a day. Now we have 70, 70. On LinkedIn, Snapchat, we have blog, podcast, YouTube, you know, Instagram, stories, Facebook, Facebook stories, Snapchat, I mean, it, it, Twitter, it's crazy. TikTok, you know, we started TikTok in May. And from May till September, we picked up 900 followers. 900. Nine, mm, no, like less than a thousand. Nine hundred. So, so about May, May, June, July, August, September. Five months. Nine hundred followers total. This is from posting two times every day, twice a day. We had some that had fifteen views, seventeen views on TikTok. Yeah, and we were. Tr I was trying to figure it out, you know. And um, didn't have, this is just this, this past year. Didn't have, and I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's keep, let's keep trying. So we were, after the Sacramento show, there was a post that Greg did. It did well on Instagram. And I was like, let, it's, it's one where he's sculpting this acrylic ball and it's flowing down the nail. Have you guys seen that? It's like a time lapse and it looks kind of cool. So I grabbed it and I posted it on TikTok. And it just went, I was like, holy shit, what's going on here? Went straight to like 110,000 views, right? We had nothing even close to that. Like I said, we only had 900 followers. We picked up 1,000 followers just from that post, right? So we picked up more in a day. My whole point, and you know, now we have, we just hit a million followers on TikTok. So from September till now, it has gone completely apeshit on TikTok for us, you know? And, and we were voted uh, top beauty brand on TikTok. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're top 100 of 2019. If you go and you look at TikTok's top 100 in the beauty category, number one is Young Nails. That's from September to December. We weren't even active the whole 2019. Why am I telling you this? Because we went through the same thing. Like it takes, you have to experiment with different things. Once I saw what worked, I said, I want every post to be this. So when we got back from our trip, we went to uh, Netherlands and we went to uh, the UK. We got back, we started shooting. I'm like, I want every color of acrylic dripping down the damn nail, you know? Yeah, you're in my cart now. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked. It does. Um, and then what happened? It just, so like, that's what I'm saying. It's, you know, you did one post, you didn't get any views. We had the same thing, you know what I mean? And like, we're a, like, people at this point, this is after two and a half years of hardcore social media marketing on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know what I mean? And just getting on TikTok, trust me, for me it was like, oh my God, it's a new platform. I'm, I'm, I had to figure it out. It's not the same as Instagram or Facebook. But once we saw what worked, I know enough that I'm, I, in my head I'm like, okay, this is gonna take experimentation and it's gonna take time. Five months, two posts a day. Think about that. That's how long it took. I mean, it's, it's kind of a long time. You know, a volume of post, 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 post. Nope, nope, nope. We tried dancing, we tried my face in the camera. None of it worked. I was hurt. <laughs> but it, it takes, you've gotta experiment. Okay, and you have to try. So that one didn't work, fine. Do, do some education. I see a lot of people on TikTok doing that. A lot of that's working. One of our mentors in the UK, she's got I think 23,000 followers now. She just started in September. She got 23,000 followers. What is she doing? It's all application stuff. Camera, and it's raw. It's not even like, it's raw. It's just picking up pearls and showing, giving instruction. Value, okay? So like, too, if, as long as you're consistent and you're like posting every day, yeah. you can almost post like a selfie even in one day. You, sh I, I think you should definitely do selfies. I mean, like, like a literally. They see who you are and people like that. They like that. <laughs> so I just took the selfie. I'm going to post it today. Like. It's, that's how it happens, you know? Or I'll sit at the desk and I'll just, I won't even know what the hell I'm gonna write. I'm just like, I'm gonna just 
make some stupid face because I actually genuinely enjoy that. Yeah. It's like therapy for me to make a face and people are like, dude, you're like, you're running a, a, a company. You're the CEO. And I'm like, Perfect. yeah, this is who I am. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in my own skin and I don't care what people say. And the people are always like, oh, you gotta be professional. You know what? I'd rather be authentic. Yeah. You know, I'd rather be me. And people, so that when you come here and I talk to you, you're like, yeah, okay, that's him. I've seen him on videos. He is a little nutty, <laughs> right? I want you to, to know me. So I'm a huge fan of selfies and people. When I look through content, I wanna see people's faces. Yeah. I really enjoy. I'm like, oh, okay, that's who's doing the nails. If you're comfortable, you know, with it. People are always like, oh, you're so self-obsessed and whatever, maybe, a little bit. <laughs> no, but like, I don't think, I think taking a selfie is just part of our culture today. Yeah. You know, it just, it is, you know, but our generation, you know, like 45, let's say 40 and up, we didn't, we didn't grow up with that or have that, so it can come off as self-obsessed to us, to our generation. To the younger gen, it's, completely part of the culture. So I say dive into the culture, take a selfie, smile. You know, you'll even see a lot of Instagram stories. I don't have, sometimes I have nothing to say. I'll just say, hey, ha have a great day. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, I love, I love the check-ins. You know, just like if, you're, like, if you're positive, just like, hey, have a very nice day. That's all I want for you today. Who's gonna, how can you be mad at that? You know, it's like, thank you. That's very nice. Where I'm from, everybody on Instagram, when you go, you see a theme. As soon as you go on their page, yeah. everything is well organized. Yeah. Do you think things like that matter? Like whether or not all your pictures are like the same lighting? Yeah. Whether or not there's like, now gonna, they have I'm gonna, like I'm gonna answer your question. or something. I'm gonna do it, because I love doing it through example. Um, this is our Young Nails page. Look at that. Just. There's a meme, there's a powder, there's, there's a IGTV video. I mean, look at this, this is a freaking mess. Look at that. This, this is the only good one right here, right here. The, there was a time when it first started where people were, what do they call it, the tiles. Um, there would be like, they would create one image out of like nine. I'm not, here. I wanna make this clear, I'm not like, uh, ragging on that at all. If you like that, you should do it. If you like it, okay? If it, truly you like it. The, your question is, does it matter? Does it make a difference? The answer is no, okay? So it doesn't, you, if you do it because you like it, then that's reason enough to do it because you genuinely like that look. Most people do it because they think it's going to make an, a difference on their profile page or likes. The answer is, it will not. The only thing that makes a difference in your content is when people go on your profile page and they start going through, are they getting something? Like, are they learning something from you, right? Think about anybody that you follow. You're either getting inspiration, you're either getting educated, there's something where uh, a, a particular way they do something, nails, or you're getting something from them. And then there's your friends and family, which you're following me because you have to, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but, but the ones that you don't know, I follow this, my wife sent me this thing of like uh, healthy foods for kids, and I, I'm not into that, but the way that she presents the information is so interesting. I'm like, oh my God. You know, she like ABs things. It's educational. So I follow it. I'm like, this is cool, you know? That is all you should be thinking about, okay? Don't worry about the look of your page. Don't worry about your grid. You know, how does my grid look? Only if you like it. If you like it and it makes you happy, then do it. But if you're doing it because you think it's gonna increase your followers or give you more exposure, it will not. It will not. The, what increases your followers or gives you more exposure, what gets you clients is value. Like when a consumer goes on there and clicks on it, it's like you're showing how to do a nail. 
like this is the right way to file a nail. I've seen too many salons do this. No, you've got to do it like this. That's when you're going to get cut. Clients are going to be like, wow, I want to go to her. You know, it's the same thing. Like if you watch, if there's like a local uh, um, plumber that comes in my feed and he's like, I'm in Los Angeles and this is how I look at plumbing. And I make sure to, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to call that dude. I don't want to do plumbing. This guy knows what he's talking about, you know? And people think like, well, I don't want to give my clients all the info of what I'm doing because they're going to learn it. No, 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 no. They have access to all that already. If you want to find out how to do something, I could learn how to build a house if I want to. I ain't going to build a house. You know, it's all on YouTube. I'm going to call the guy and say, please do this. I have no business training and I've tried looking online and I'm asking as many questions as I possibly can, but like, I don't know how it works with like, for example, your finances, mm -hmm. like how, when you buy your first set of products, how mm -hmm. do you know how long that's going to last and how many clients that's going to last for? Yeah. How much are you actually spending on each client based on how much product you're using? Yeah. To, so like, stuff like that. So we have like a, generic, you know, like, like one, one of our acrylic kits will get you about 40 sets of nails. That's a rough estimate depending on, cause clients have different size nail beds, how you apply pro Some people are more heavy on the acrylic and they just go harder on the filing, you know, more on the filing. So they're going to use more. It's something that you're going to have to, um, really, you're gonna to have to experiment for yourself and see. And one way to do that, a basic way to do that, you know, is how much product am I spending monthly over how many clients, how many clients am I seeing? And then you can get a rough idea of how much per client it's costing you. That's the real, you know, if you're spending, you know, I don't know, 200, Let's say you're spending $500 a month on nail products. It's a lot. Okay, I don't, again, I don't know what I'm talking about. Johnny's spending $500 on young nails, and young nails every month, every day. Sure, <laughs> And over, um, let's say you saw 80 clients, 20 clients a week, right? So $6.25 a client. And what you do is it's, it's gonna, one month you might spend less because that product is gonna last you into the next month. So after a year, you're gonna have a, re, after doing that 12 months, you're gonna say, I transacted, you know, whatever, 500 clients in the year and I spent $10,000 in product, whatever, I'm just making up numbers. You divide it and you, you know exactly what you're, Pretty much, pretty close to what your average cost per client is going to be, okay? What you got to remember too is in the beginning you're going to make so many mistakes. You're going to buy too much. You're going to buy too little. You're, it, you cannot avoid that, okay? So please don't, like, don't get frustrated if you overspend or if you underspend and like you don't have enough. You'll, you're, you're going to find your rhythm in the beginning. You're going to make so. You're just going to make mistakes. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. You know what I mean? So, so, but the, the fact that you're, it's on your mind is good because you're like, when you do make that mistake, you're going to learn very fast because it's already on your, on your mind. You mentioned LinkedIn. Yes. Yeah, so I work with architects, so everybody has a LinkedIn, but mm -hmm. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. like, how do you, how do you, how would you post content on that? So a lot of our content on LinkedIn is more business focused. We do put nail stuff on there still, but it's definitely skewed more business. So I think LinkedIn is a great, if I was a nail tech and I was on LinkedIn, I'd be talking about my salon business, things I'm doing in my salon business, how I'm improving my salon business. And I would, I would drop nails in there from time to time just to kind of switch it up. And also so that professionals, all, you know, there's tons, I mean, that it's flooded with executives, women executives that are, they wanna get their nails done by somebody. If they see your work on there, hey, she down the street, oh my God, let me, let me DM her, see where she's located. Um, I really think there's opportunity, but I would talk a lot about the salon business, the business side there, because that's kind of the platform that it is, it's more business. Cool, does that help? Okay. 
Thank you guys. I really appreciate it.